morning, boys and girls. Welcome to SGBC Children's Worship and welcome to 2021. Let's open our worship with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your blessings from beginning of the year to the end of the year. Help us this year to worship you this first Sunday of 2021 with all our hearts and all our mind and help us to follow you more closely, spend more time with you, and grow closer with our brothers and sisters in Christ this year. We ask that you be with us this morning, enjoy our worship, and may all our praise and all our worship bring honor to your name. We thank you and we pray all this in Jesus' name, amen. Now, boys and girls, it's the first week of 2021, and I'm pretty sure you're still on holiday, but going back to school, uh, maybe in the next couple of weeks, but no matter what happened, we want this year, we want to dedicate this coming year to God and hope that all of us will grow a little bit closer to Him. So today we're going to start our worship with our key Bible verse. And I would like to thank Samuel and Chloe for writing, drawing it out, and also reading it out for us. So I'll hand this next, I'll hand this time to Samuel and Chloe to present the Bible verse for today, Luke chapter 2. Verse 38 to 40. Samuel and Chloe, go ahead. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had did everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Luke chapter 2, verse 38 to 40. Thank you, Samuel and Chloe, for presenting our main Bible verse for us today. What a great job you guys have done. So this is the first day of the year, and God not only love and have mercies on us from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, but his love lasts forever and ever and ever until we meet with him in heaven, and his love will continue on. So uh, we would like to uh, praise God and sing about his mercy that will last forever. So this is a song that we've sung before. And uh, I would like to uh, sing this song again with you guys, especially on the first uh, first day, first week of the year. So let's sing this song together. It's called um, "I Will Sing of the Mercies of the Lord." Okay, let's sing with me. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. I will sing. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. Now this time I would like you to join me to sing, but instead of singing I and me, I would like to do it with us uh, and we, okay? So let's sing it all together, okay? We will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever, we will sing, we will sing, we will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever, we will sing of the mercies of the Lord. wonderful praising God together. Now this is the first week of 2021 and this is the first time that we worship Him together. 
this is the day that Lord, the Lord has created for us. So the next song, I would like to welcome Charmaine, Uncle Kenneth and Auntie Charlotte to lead us into praising God together. And the song is called, This is the Day. This is the day. One, two, three. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. family for leading us into worship. Now today I have a big word that I want to share with you. The word is community. Now do you know what community is? Can you tell me what it is? Community is actually a group of people who live or gather together for common reasons. Now how many communities do you think you belong to? Can you think about some communities that you belong to? Well, I definitely think that you belong to more than one community. Let's say your family, your mom and dad and your, yourself and your siblings is a community. That may include your grandparents or your uncles and aunties. Okay. Um, your class at school is another community, your teachers and your classmates. Okay. You are all, you are together doing the same thing, right? Uh, the town of Stofield that you lived in is a community too because it's a group of people who live together in that area. You share the same parks, um, you, sh you use the same uh, facilities, and uh, the government is, you know, um, managing everything in the town of Stofield. So that's a community too. And here at Stofield Grace Baptist Church, we are a community too. We are a faith community that you belong to. So I can already count like, you know, four or five communities that you belong to, and you may belong to other communities. Um, like a sports community that really you belong to or a, a music or a dance community that you belong to. So we do belong to a lot of communities. So what is so good about being belongs to a community? It is helpful in a number of ways. First is sh uh, share with one another and take care of one another, right? Um, so the people within that community, they share things together or, you know, they, they uh, take care of one another. Um, it's also teach you things that you no, don't know yet. So like, let's say within a community, there's like different people who know different things and who have different special skills and they all share it and, you know, teach each other or help each other doing that. Um, it's also listen to you and cares about you, uh, what you say, like your teachers or your friends. Um, it can encourage you or pick you up when you are disappointed or down. Um, it's also help you keep doing the things that the community cares about and why you joined that community in the first place uh, to reach a goal that the community wanted to, to reach. Um, like a team or machines that actually work together to achieve a common goal. So a community is not only helpful, but it's important, you know. Now this morning I have a box of Kleenex here, okay. Mm, I like to use Kleenex because it's like soft and really good and it's you can wipe out your you know sweat and face okay um, see what happened here when I pull a Kleenex out what happened another one come up why is that have you ever pulled apart a box of Kleenex just to see the mystery how did that happen why is it that when I pull one up the next one pop up do you know why have you ever take apart the Kleenex box and find out why? Actually, each Kleenex is connected to one another. They are connected. Even if I go all the way to the very bottom of this box, you will find that they are all connected. That's exactly what the community is like. Each member of the community is connected and they are all connected to one another. Connected? Why? Well, because someday you might need somebody to help you out. Just like this box is like our church. 
we are all connected and we are, we are always there to lift one another up. You need another believers around you to lift you up because life sometimes could be hard or sometimes it could be sad and disappointing. And we need other believers around us to help keep lifting us up whenever that happens. And if you say, well, I don't need anybody else, then listen, you will never win the battles in your life. You will always lose because there's nobody to help you. When you fall, when you fall, you can't get up because you won't. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13, it say, But build one other up every day. Encourage one another. How often? Every day. Do it as long as there's still time. Then none of you will become stubborn and you won't be fooled by sin's tricks. You won't be fooled by Satan's tricks. So it's important to have one another and to belong to a community, especially when you're walking in your journey of faith. Which reminds me of today's Bible lesson in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, you can um, take out your Bible and turn to Luke chapter 2. Luke is in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke. So the third book of the New Testament before John. Chapter 2, big number 2. And we're going to start from verse 22 onwards. Luke chapter 2. Verse 22, small letter 22 onwards, okay? This is after Jesus was born. The time came as required by the law of Moses. So Joseph and Mary took Jesus to Jerusalem, to the temple. There they presented him to the Lord. Now in the law of the Lord back in Exodus, okay? The first baby, the first baby boy that was born in every family must be set apart for the Lord. So when they do that, they go up to the temple and take their sacrifice with them so that they can present uh, the little boy Jesus to the Lord. Now in Jerusalem, there was a man called Simeon. He was a good and godly man. He was actually waiting for God's promise to Israel to come true. The Holy Spirit was with him. The Spirit told Simeon that he would not die before he seen the Lord's Messiah. Now, back in the days, the Israelite believed that a Messiah is coming. God is going to send a Messiah to rescue them, to save them, to lead them into a big, powerful kingdom. So the Spirit led Simeon into the temple courtyard. When Mary and Joseph brought Jesus into the temple, Simeon looked, took Jesus in his arm and praised God. He said, Lord, O oh Lord, you are the king over all. Now let me, your servant, go in peace, because this is what you have promised. My eyes have now seen your salvation, your plan, right? You have prepared it in the sight of all nations. This is a light to be given to all the people, not only the Jewish people, not only the Israelite. And it will be the glory of your people, Israel. So all of a sudden, when Jesus walked in the temple, this old guy called Simeon, come over, rush over and pick up Jesus and say, wow, 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 praise God, because I have seen his Messiah. So the child's father, which is Joseph and Mary, they were amazed at what was said about him. So Simeon blessed them and let them continue on. Now, when they walked further into the temple, there was also a prophet named Anna. Now, Anna was very old. According to the Bible, she's like 87 old and her husband has died long ago. Since her husband died, she never left the temple. She worshipped there night and day and prayed there night and day. When Anna saw Jesus, little Jesus, come in, she came up to Jesus' family and immediately she gave thanks to God. And she spoke to them about the child who all were looking forward to when Jerusalem will be set free. Now Joseph and Mary listened and took these into their heart. So after they presented Jesus to God, they returned to Galilee and they went into their own town of Nazareth and stayed there and, and um, grew their family there. And Jesus grew and become strong, he become wise, and he was blessed by God's grace and people loved him. Okay. Now in today's Bible story, we hear that Jesus has a faith community too, just like us even when he was very little and very young. 
even younger than some of you. Now, two of the people in that faith community were Simeon and Anna. In today's Bible story, we hear that we hear that Simeon is talking to Mary and Joseph, and what he tells them are the reminders about who Jesus will be, and what Jesus will do for their faith community. And did you hear that Mary and Joseph? What their response was? That's right. They were amazed and they listened very carefully. Then. That these were very important words for Mary and Joseph to hear, and they take it into their own heart. And guess what? Just like Jesus, we are part of a faith community where we can all remind each other about how good God is. Just like Simeon and Anna told Mary and Joseph how good God is, where we can share God's worth with one another, and we can encourage one another, and we can continue to help each other to pay attention to God. And just like Jesus, who grew up in a community that support and encourage him, so too do you and I. We have a community that help us, that support us, and bring our attention to God here as SGBC. So thank you for being in this faith community. Thank you for lifting me up. Thank you for praying for me, and thank you for helping all of us to grow closer to God, with the help of one another. We can grow and become strong and wise and blessed by God's grace too. So let's bow our head and pray. Be heavenly Father. We thank you for this faith community, Stouffville Grace Baptist Church. We thank you for the brothers and sister that reminds us that to keep paying attention to you, to encourage one another to good to do good, and to pray for one another. And to lift one another up, so that we too can live like Jesus did. We thank you, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, boys and girls, let's do our Lord's prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glories are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, before we end our worship, we want to、um, celebrate the upcoming birthday on January fifth, which is on Tuesday. It's Samuel, twelve years old birthday. Happy birthday, Samuel! With the unfolding of each year, I wish that you will come to know God's purpose and His plan for you, and as you continue to walk with Him through your life. Happy birthday to you! Now, boys and girls, that's our worship for today. I hope you guys enjoy your holiday, and、um, I hope you guys enjoy your new year as well. So remember, this new year, I want us to all walk closer to God every single day. And through worship, through Bible club, through TNT, and through family worship, family altar, we can all help each other to get closer and grow closer to God each day. Thank you. Have a good week, and I'll see you next week. Bye.